Greetings, everyone. Today, I'd like to talk about how to heal your leaky gut using Layer Origins Pure HMO Prebiotic Powder and how through uh, some testing, a friend of mine was using Pure HMO and through some gut testing, he was able to rise to the 99th percentile in two key indicators of a healthy gut. So let's talk about that. My friend's testimony begins this way. I was experiencing bloating, consistent weariness, joint pain, and regular headaches. These symptoms had been persistent, increasing in frequency over time. When a friend, that would be me, testified to the significant benefit HMO had provided him and his wife, verified by before and after gut testing, I wanted to jump on board. And my friend at the time was feeling absolutely miserable. Even though he's got a good diet, uh, takes care of himself, he just felt miserable. And he said that he had a uh, two-week vacation coming up very soon, and he wanted to to try to feel better for that. So I suggested instead of taking a one serving daily of HMO, which is two grams, that he just double that. Um, and Jason at, at, at Layer Origin suggested that as well at one point uh, in, in another another situation. And he did that for two or three weeks, and he felt great after that. He really thought the HMO had a significant impact very, very quickly. And following then a review of my second gut test result, which uh, is about six, six months apart, as you'll see, along with a noticeable decrease in all the above symptoms, I am quite pleased and grateful. I hope to continue using HMO going forward while learning more about the priority of gut health to a sustained, well-lived life. So the result of that, as we'll see in a moment here, is that he rose to the 99th percentile in two key indicators of a healthy gut. So what, what are those indicators? First of all, we're going to look at the gram positive bacteria in his gut. And all these charts that I'll be showing are provided by the Biome site website. And that is a free service that they provide. If your gut test uh, company uh, has uh, files called FASTQ files, which are essentially, they're like Excel data files for the microbiome. If they have those, you can upload it to Biome site and get these amazing charts and comparisons and distributions. You can track all of your results. My wife and I have three gut tests now up there and they'll, they'll track all of these uh, over time. So it's a fantastic uh, website. So I encourage you to check that out. But gram positive bacteria, you've got two types of of bacteria, gram positive, gram negative. Uh, the gram positive simply means that that it's positive for the grams stain. It, that means it picks up the stain and they turn purple under a microscope and gram negative do not pick up the stain. So they, they appear to be red. Um, so that's what that means. But it just so happens that in our gut, gram positive bacteria have a positive benefit and gram negative bacteria have a negative benefit. So that might be helpful for you to, to remember that. But my friend's result was that before going in HMO, 62% of his gut bacteria were gram positive and that rose to 87%. Uh, he is the fourth person that I've tested. I've never seen a result that high. Uh, these are just crazy results. And then of course, if you look at the, the opposite gram negative, uh, of course, it'll be the very opposite of the gram positive results. But if you look at the chart, it looks like a more dramatic uh, uh, decrease. Uh, the chart looks a little more uh, dramatic there. So the result was that his gram positive bacteria at 87% of his gut put him in the 99th percentile. And now this is filtered for all adults, anyone 18 or over, and all the data points, which is uh, several thousand on biome site, uh, my friend was in the 99th percentile. You can see on the distribution line that he is literally off the charts. So what difference does that make? Well, let's let's take a, a quick look at the cross section of the gut. You see what is called the lumen that is literally inside of your colon. There's a couple of layers of mucin, which is just a protective mucus layer. Then you see a single row of epithelial cells. The only thing protecting uh, the interior contents of your colon from getting into your bloodstream is this single layer cell of epithelial cells. Now you see there's also things called goblet cells and panda cells that have slightly different functions, but primarily made up of these epithelial cells, also called colonocytes. 
So what we're going to do is zoom in on a section of the colonocytes. You see the same layers there, the lumen, inside the lumen, bacteria, food, something called LPS we're going to be talking about, and then that epithelial layer. And if you look there, you'll see that the cells uh, are held together by these proteins. That is called a, a tight junction. That is what an intact barrier, what a healthy gut is supposed to look like. There's not supposed to be any... Uh, loose junctions there, no permeability between those epithelial cells, which would allow, uh, again, bacteria, LPS, food particles to get from the inside of your colon into your bloodstream. You definitely do not want that. And on the right side, a disrupted barrier, uh, which is also called a leaky gut or permeable gut. Uh, you see those tight junctions are broken and uh, all of those things can literally squeeze through and get into your bloodstream. And that is what gram-negative bacteria do. They have on their cell wall a, a very bad toxin called LPS, lipopolysaccharide. And of course, the more uh, gram-negative bacteria you have, the more LPS toxin that uh, you're going to get. And we'll talk about the effects of LPS in a minute, but it's also important to realize that LPS not only gets into your bloodstream and causes problems, but can actually open these tight junctions. So it, it's it's doubly bad. It will cause a leaky gut, and then it will take advantage of the leaky gut and spread its toxin all throughout your body. A couple of uh, research papers here from the International Journal of Molecular Sciences from 2021. Another interesting factor is that LPS can create direct epithelial damage in the gut, which promotes the so-called leaky gut, allowing endotoxemia, that is, uh, that is uh, toxin LPS in your blood, to take place and trigger systemic immunity. In other words, systemic inflammation, which is the cause of all disease. From the Journal of Immunology of, of, in 2015, LPS at physiological concentrations causes an increase in inte intestinal tight junction permeability. Again, that means that it gives you a leaky gut. It literally directly causes a leaky gut, opens those tight junctions. The LPS then gets into the bloodstream and that uh, can be taken anywhere throughout your body causing systemic inflammation in multiple diseases. What sort of diseases? Well, from the Journal of Endocrine Society from 2020, for example, in the liver, increased inflammation leads to increased insulin resistance and lipogenesis resulting in fatty liver disease, increased adipose tissue or skeletal muscle inflammation, insulin resistance underlies the development of diabetes. In a former video of mine, I described how inflammation in your body will cause your uh, cells to resist insulin's influence. And the, the sole purpose of insulin is to drive glucose into your cells to give them energy. And if the, the cells are resisting insulin's influence, that means the glucose can't get in the cells. That, mean, that means it remains in the bloodstream, which increases your blood glucose levels will eventually increase your HbA1c levels, and that is the beginning of type 2 diabetes. And then finally, increased infiltration of activated macrophages into the artery wall initiates arthro arthrogenesis, which is the same thing as arthro arthrosclerosis, which is heart disease. And that's just a sampling of the number of metabolic and autoimmune diseases that can be caused by a leaky gut through LPS. So, how do how do we heal this? What what do we what do we, how do we reverse these things or keep it from happening in the first place? Well, first of all, you want to increase the number of gram positive bacteria in your gut. Remember, gram negative are causing the LPS toxin, so uh, to do its damage. So, if you increase the gram positive, it will decrease the gram negative, which will decrease your LPS, which will close those tight junctions. And remember, my friend was at the 99th percentile for gram-positive bacteria. Then you want to increase butyrate, and uh, which will heal the colon. So let's talk about butyrate. Here's his chart. He went from 49% to 74%, so almost a, about a 50% increase in there, which is just amazing. And that resulted also in a 99th percentile of butyrate levels. Now, it's important to realize that when we're talking about 74% uh, uh, 
the, these numbers, 49 to 74%. This is not directly measuring the amount of butyrate in your gut. Butyrate is a, by the way, a short chain fatty acid, uh, one of, of three main ones that are actually produced by uh, some gram positive bacteria. So this is not a direct measurement of the amount of butyrate in your gut. Rather, it is the, these numbers represent uh, the amount of butyrate producing bacteria in your gut. So he increased his butyrate producing bacteria by 50%. And that 74% level, and not only the 99th percentile, but is the second highest result I've ever seen. My daughter's is actually just slightly higher than that. And she's also sitting at the 99th percentile. And like the gram positive distribution, you can see he is literally off of that chart. And what does butyrate do from the frontiers in immunology in 2019? Butyrate is a primary energy source for colonocytes and also maintains intestinal homeostasis through anti-inflammatory actions. So the colonocytes literally consume, they, they, they eat uh, butyrate for their energy, uh, which then is anti-inflammatory. Intestinal bowel disease is characterized by gastrointestinal dysbiosis both in patients and in animal models, which particularly impairs short chain fatty acid production, thereby restraining energy supply to colonocytes and local control of mucosal inflammation. In other words, your butyrate production goes down and your inflammation goes up, the very opposite of what you want to have happen. So when you increase your gram positive bacteria, when you increase your level of butyrate, that heals the colon. And again, in, in both cases, both key indicators, my friend was at the 99th percentile. And then of course that reduces greatly the risk of all sorts of diseases. So the question is then, will this heal my leaky gut? If I take HMO from layer origin, will that heal my leaky gut? Well, it will go a long, long way to, do, to doing so. You know, the, the, the data here, the, the, the increases the, and the differences that HMO made are indisputable. But uh, I would never say, of course, that alone uh, is going to be all that you need. Uh, for example, from uh, this is a quote, you can't out-exercise a bad diet. Uh, this is from the Mastering Diabetes podcast, which... I, I don't have diabetes, but I listen to regularly. I learn a lot from those guys. And I love that quote, you can't out-exercise a bad diet. So what, what they're, what they're um, talking about really, what they're trying to, to bring out is the difference between fitness and health. Uh, you can be extremely fit. You can be a world-class athlete and be extremely unhealthy. You can have a tremendous leaky gut, all sorts of inflammation uh, that is slowly building your body. By the way, LPS, unlike other toxins produced like, for example, like E. coli, which is another gram-negative bacteria, those sorts of toxins, some of them can kill you in a matter of days. Well, LPS isn't, isn't going to kill you that fast, but it will kill you eventually. It takes years, perhaps even decades, but um, so it's a very slow sort of poison. So uh, HMO, you know, supplements, you can't out exercise a bad diet in the same way you can't out supplement a bad diet. I would never say that, that any sort of supplement by itself is sufficient. Uh, you need an excellent diet and a book that really helped my wife and I is the fiber fueled diet, uh, fiber fueled book by Will Busowitz. And, uh, he recommends in there a, an approximately a 90% plant-based diet. Um, many would recommend a 100% plant-based diet. That, of course, is your decision. Uh, but you've got to eat uh, primarily plants and a wide variety of color and type of plants. My wife and I shoot for uh, 30 different plants uh, per month. Uh, sorry, per week. Uh, a variety of 30 different plants per week is, is the way we sort of uh, structure our our cooking, our diet, our meal planning, which in many ways is makes it easy easier instead of um, you know counting uh, calories and those sorts of things. Uh, we just strive to get the the widest variety of plants in our diet. And uh, also, he came out with a, a cookbook, which I want uh, to get a hold of uh, uh, sometime soon. Now, one interesting. Uh, 
side note in all these good results from my friend's second gut test is the fact that his bifidobacterium level actually went down. Now, if you look at the, the results there, 0.3% to 0.26%, statistically insignificant, even though the graph looks rather dramatic. Uh, but my point is that his bifidobacteria did not rise, which everyone else I tested uh, did happen with HMO. For example, here's my daughter's results. Uh, went from effectively zero, almost non-existent in her gut, to 6% of her gut. That is very, very high. Uh, mine is at almost 9%. And I had a combination of uh, a couple of different uh, soluble fibers and HMO. HMO made the largest difference, uh, but she was only on HMO. So I was very curious why that did not have an impact on my friend's uh, bifido levels. So we're he's uh, ordered a couple of uh, different probiotics that are heavy on bifidobacteria. Uh, so he has agreed to, very happy, he wants to know himself, whether the combination of probiotics and the prebiotic fiber HMO will make a difference. And I'm very curious as well. But in the meantime, uh, my friend's results were uh, nothing short of spectacular, 99th percentile in gram positive bacteria, 99th percentile in butyrate, two key leading indicators for a healthy gut. And um, also, uh, of course, he just feels fantastic. He's, he's very happy. Uh, so uh, appreciate you watching these and, and good health to you.